This video is for all you digital nomads. Today we've got something that's turbocharged our van life experience. We're diving into the fast lane of 5G connectivity, checking out the GLX 3000 5G router from GLINet, a game-changing piece of tech bringing professional functionality, features and performance in a consumer-focused package. So keep watching to find out how you can bring lightning fast internet speeds to your home on wheels. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. Here we have the GLX 3000, also known as the Spitz AX, the key to turning your van into a mobile hotspot that can keep up with your wanderlust. From remote working to streaming your favourite shows under the stars, this is the tech upgrade your van life's been waiting for. We're going to unpack its features, compare it to other models, put it to the test and explore how it could revolutionise the way you stay connected on the road. So if you've ever dreamed of a life where your home on wheels is as connected as it is adventurous, stick around because this review is for you. We've previously reviewed and loved the RUTX 50 from Teltonica, and you can check out our review of that up here. And as a professional industrial 5G router, it is a great choice. The GLX 3000 is what I would call a prosumer model. It's not as basic or mass market focused as say the 5G Netgear Nighthawk M6, but it's also not quite as industrial as the RUTX 50. For me, when it comes to functionality and features, it sits somewhere in the middle. So before we put it through any tests, let's start by taking a look at how the features and functionality differ between these and where they sit when it comes to the important topic of price. All three models have 4G, 4G Plus and 5G capable cellular modems. The Netgear and the GLX 3000 are CAT19 and the RUTX50 is CAT20. They all have 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi, with the GLX 3000 and Netgear supporting the newer Wi-Fi 6 protocol. All three models can be powered from 12 volts, the Netgear via USB-C and the other a standard 12 volt in. Unlike the Netgear, both the GLX3000 and the RUTX50 have dual SIM slots and can act as Wi-Fi repeaters to connect to public hotspots. The Netgear can have 32 simultaneous devices connected by Wi-Fi, the RUTX50 150 and the GLX3000 184. When it comes to external antenna connections, the Netgear is very basic with just the 2x2 LTE MIMO connection via a TS9 connector, which we're not fans of as they damage easily and are prone to coming loose. Both the GLX3000 and the RUTX50 have superior 4x4 MIMO LTE antenna connections using the much more robust and secure SMA connectors, plus they both have SMA connectors for external Wi-Fi antennas too. The GLX3000 and the RUTX50 also have band locking, load balancing and failover across their multiple networks. The GLX3000 has built-in and configurable VPNs, ad blocking and other methods of securing your connection. It can also lock the cellular connection to a specific mobile tower. You can add a memory card to store files, movies and music so all your devices can access them and it's also able to tether by USB to either another cellular modem or your phone if you want to boost your connection speed even further. The RUTX50 has configurable VPNs, the toughest industrial design making it super robust as used in police cars, trains, buses, ambulances, rally cars and even helicopters. It also has other features like GPS for tracking, inputs and outputs to control devices or receive alerts and can be controlled via SMS message. So purely looking at the published features and prices, well, to be honest, I think Netgear are being very cheeky with their pricing of the M6 MR6150. It is by far the most expensive for the least features, 
probably because they feel they have the better brand name and consumers will choose it thinking they're getting a better product and that really annoys me. The IUT X50 is a great device as we found out when we tested it and at £496 or even cheaper with our 10% discount at solwise.co.uk if you want a bomb proof industrial 5G modem with loads of expert features it is a great choice. But at just £415 the GLX3000 ticks all the boxes most will want or need in a 5G router plus a few more extras in a more consumer focused package. So let's get on with a closer look at it. GLINet very kindly sent us the GLX3000 to try out but you can find them on Amazon and currently that 15% discount brings the price in at just £415.65p. Looking at what we get in the box there are six on unit antennas, the instructions, the unit itself, a mounting bracket and international power unit to supply 12 volt to the unit. Having a quick look around the unit you can see the SMA connectors for either the on unit antennas or external antennas, 12 volt power socket, USB socket, two ethernet sockets, two SIM card slots and a micro SD slot. Simply popping a Smarty SIM card in, attaching the antennas and plugging it in got us up and running and using the preset networks and password we could connect our devices. So let's very quickly compare the network speed of one mobile connected to the GLX3000 by Wi-Fi. Which gets 227 megabits per second download. and 2.03 upload. This mobile is connected directly to Smarty on 5G and we only get 169 megabits per second download and 0.77 upload. Logging into the GLX3000's admin page we can do all the usual changing of passwords, network names and various different configurations which we'll see later. You can also use the GLINet mobile app which I found to be fantastic. So now let's check out the speeds we get when using it in the van, first in an area with 5G coverage. But to give us a baseline we're going to see what speeds we get from our Huawei B535232 4G plus router using the pointing external antenna. We get 20.6 down and 12.9 up. We'll summarise all the results at the end. Now using 5G on our phone but outside the van we get 184 down and 1.81 up. Inside the van this drops to 28.8 down but 3.29 up and now let's see how the GLX3000 does. Starting with its on unit antennas inside the van we get 76.6 down and 10.6 up. And finally, with the GLX3000 connected to a 4x4 MIMO pointing antenna, we get 290 megabits per second down and 12.8 up. And here's a summary of those results. But as we don't always stay in areas with 5G, let's see how it performs in an area with 4G only. A Huawei router using external antennas gets 14.6 down and 29.4 up. First let's try the GLX3000 again with its on unit antennas. And we get 55.8 down and 14.5 up. Now let's get it connected to that 4x4 pointing antenna. And we see 57.4 down and 37.6 up. 
Here's a summary of those 4G results. Something we often get asked is when using an external Wi-Fi antenna, does it impact the performance of the Wi-Fi inside the van? Well, let's check it out. Starting with the Wi-Fi antennas on the device, in the van and the device in the van. Then using the external 2x2 Wi-Fi antennas in the pointing MIMO 4 with the device outside as well. And finally with the external antenna and the device inside the van. Here's a summary of those results where you can see that having the external antennas has a higher performance when the receiving device is outside or inside the van with the 5 GHz Wi-Fi. And using the external Wi-Fi antenna as an experiment we saw that we could connect it to the van's 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi from approximately 80 meters away. With the functionality in the GLX3000, having the Wi-Fi antennas external gives an added benefit. As you can see here, our phone inside the van can only detect our own routers inside the van. But if we ask the GLX3000 to search for Wi-Fi hotspots, it finds 16. If any of these were open public hotspots or hotspots you had access to, you could connect to these and repeat the service to your own network in the van. This is just one of the more advanced features that the GLX3000 has, so let's take a look at some of the others. Having two SIM slots, you can have different SIMs and the unit can be set to automatically switch between those when the signal drops. Using that Wi-Fi repeater, you can connect to Wi-Fi, and if that drops, it will automatically fail over to another network. You can also improve your performance by load balancing across two networks, with varying in percentages. And with that USB slot, you can either tether your mobile phone or another USB modem to allow you to simultaneously attach to two mobile networks and share the bandwidth. We've talked about 4x4 MIMO connections, but why are they better? Modern cellular modems use multiple antennas to connect to multiple bands to improve their performance. If you only have 2x2 external connections, like on the Netgear M6, only some of the antennas can actually be replaced with external antennas, so some of the bands connected still need to get to the internal antennas. And when you're in a metal box, that's not great. Being able to replace all the internal antennas with either two 2x2 two two or one 4x4 four four MIMO antenna means the performance of all the bands are maximised. Add in external Wi-Fi antennas and with a router that connects to Wi-Fi like the GLX3000, you also maximise the hotspots you can connect to. If you're worried about your van starting to look like a hedgehog with all these antennas, don't worry. Pointing's latest MIMO 417 antenna combines 4x4 LTE and 2x2 Wi-Fi antennas into a small, discreet and easy to mount antenna. You can find a link to this in the video notes. Some other features to call out on the GLX3000 can be accessed through the app or admin pages. There are a number of inbuilt security and privacy features from VPNs to using the Tor network. All the signal information you can need is accessible, along with being able to see every band the unit is connected to. If you've seen our other videos on band locking, you'll know that when left to their own devices, cellular modems don't always make the best choice of band to use, so the GLX3000 gives you the choice to select what bands to use in both 4G or 5G. Plus, unlike any other router we've used in the past, you can actually specify which tower you want the modem to connect to. So, I don't think our conclusion is going to be a surprise. With the packed feature set, the ease of use, performance and the price point, the GLX3000 is a router we would definitely recommend. It has everything plus more that we would want in a 5G router and performed flawlessly in all the time we've been using it. So much so that we'll be using it as our main source of internet going forward. So if you want the speeds of 5G in a consumer focused package but with professional features, do check it out. 
Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.